a control volume. So we'll try to you know discuss the forces which is acting on the control volume and what sort of forces, how we can um, calculate that force. So uh, this is a control volume. You, you can see this is just an arbitrary control volume and this red dotted line, this is the control surface. You already know this. So the force applying on this control volume, um, it could be two types of force. One is the, the body force and the other one is the surface force. Okay, so the body force usually acts throughout the entire body of the control volume. So this is the whole control volume. So let's say the gravity or different types of magnetic forces, that's actually the body force. While the surface forces, this is the control surface, okay. So that acts on the control surface, this red dotted line. So it could be pressure, it could be... Um, different types of reaction forces when we usually use some support and um, it could be you know the viscous forces so we'll discuss gradually so two types of force we have uh, one is the body force and other one is the surface force so the summation of the total total force which is acting on this control volume this is the sum of the body force and sum of the surface forces okay so two types of force when we're talking about the total force acting on a control volume this is the body force and the surface force so we need to know that the body force it actually acts throughout the entire domain like the control volume while the surface force it only acts on the control surface okay so now um, here we know that okay body forces are gravity electric or magnetic forces so let's say um, we have a volumetric portion of the control volume we took very small part of the control volume here okay so the body force um, acts you know on the differential element of the fluid of volume dv here this is dv is the differential volume so this is a volumetric portion of the control volume just we took very small part so we said the body force actually acts on a differential element of the fluid volume dv inside the control volume okay so here we'll discuss about the gravity this is the most common body force would we have and for some devices we need to deal with the you know the electric or the magnetic forces but here we'll only discuss about the gravity so the gravity is the most common body force here and when we're talking about that the body force acts on the differential volume the differential elements of the fluid volume dv so this is for the differential section very elementary sections so if we actually want to get the net body force for the entire domain then we must need to do some the volume integral okay you already know that okay when you have the small um, sections then we get the value for that section and now if we actually want to get the total thing then we need to do some integrations right so here we need to do some volume integrations okay similarly the surface force uh, uh, we know that it actually acts um, on the surface control surface so we need to do some area integral to obtain the night surface forces so we'll discuss that on later so here the body force gravity is acting this way you see this is the directions of the gravity so it's always the downward directions we know and uh, it yeah so this is always acts the downward directions in every differential elements of the control volume so what we can say here is the body force the it is actually we're talking about the differential section so the differential body force dx the small amount of body force this is df of the gravity due to the gravity and here gravity is acting on the downward directions this is all about the weight of the differential uh, elements of the fluid of volume delta v so that's what we can say here the gravity the, the gravitational force this is all about the weight of the fluid elements okay so this is simply the weight so we can say that this df gravity is rho g 
V. Now it's not V anymore. It is DV. That's the differential elements. So rho G delta V. So G is actually telling about the direction. So how it's um, working. So what we said, this is the differential body force. So we are not going to consider the electrical or the magnetic force for this case, but we will we'll consider only the gravity here. So then some of the body force we said, um, this is for the elementary section. If we actually want to get the total body force, we need to do the integration. So we did the integration here. You look, this is the integration CV. That means for the control volume, for the whole control volume that what we discussed earlier. It is rho g dv. So g, this is uh, gravity's constant term. So if we put it out of the domain uh, g, so then it is rho dv. So this rho dv, we can say this is actually the mass of the control volume, or we can say mcv. So the total body force here is mcv g. So mass into gravity. So that's the total uh, body force acting on this surface. Now, it was quite easy, right? Now, we need to discuss about the, um, we know that the total force is the body force plus the surface force. So we already have the body force. Now, we need to get the surface force. So, what sort of surface force is acting here? Actually, this is uh, not easier to calculate the surface force because it has two components, normal and the tangential components. So, this is actually, this is actually tough to analyze the surface forces which is acting on a control volume. Also, you know, the, the physical force acting uh, on the surface, okay, is independent of orientation. So, the, um, you will see that the, the, the description of this force um, with the coordinate system will change. You, you, you look here, here the coordinate axis are rotated. So, this is, uh, if you closely look here, this is the coordinate system here, the coordinate system. So it rotates. So the component of the surface force, it will also change. So you will see here, this is the surface normal, surface tangent, and this is the surface force. So uh, you just closely look here. I actually want to make this video short, and that one is less important here. But what we uh, need to know is, uh, when we are talking about the surface force, we have two different things, the normal stress and the shear stress, um, tangential stresses. So what we will do um, to analyze this system, we will introduce a new second order um, tensor. This is called the stress tensor and we'll define it like, um, you know, the stress ten tensor is, uh, we'll define it like Greek sigma ij, it is equal uh, this is sigma xx, sigma xy, sigma xz. Here we'll say this is sigma yx, sigma yy, sigma yz. And then finally, sigma zx, sigma, you know, zy, and sigma zz. Okay, so you will see this diagonal, it's actually telling sigma xx, sigma yy, sigma z, that's the normal stresses, okay? This diagonal component of the, um, you know, it's telling like the xx, yy, z, z, that's the normal stresses and you know normal means it needs to make, you can see here, this is normal, that means 90 degree, um, normal means kind of like this, it will make 90 degree angle. Anyways, so these components are the normal components, okay? So we always, um, you know, acts like inordinately normal, and we'll discuss this later on. The other things that's the shear stresses. So here, um, this sigma ij, this is defined as the stress, which is force per unit area, which is we say the force per unit area. So this is uh, defined as the stresses, okay, in the if, if I say this is sigma i j, so this is in the j directions, okay? This is in the j directions acting on the face whose normal is in the i direction. So I'm repeating again, sigma i j. This is the stress, which is force 
per unit area so it is acting in the j directions okay in the j directions which is acting on the phase whose normal normal is in the i directions it is not the unit vector so keep in mind this i z this is not the unit vector but it's just telling about the tensor anyway so we will get the surface force acting on the differential surfaces by using this stress tensor sigma i z the dot product of this normal the outer normal vector n you see this is the normal okay the outer normal component n into the differential area so that's actually the uh, this you know the surface forces acting on this so this is the differential component so if we actually want to get the net surface forces then what you need to do is we need to do the integrations then we'll get the surface forces right so we know the total force it is actually sum up the body force and the surface force this is the body force we already have and now we have got this is the surface forces so that's actually the net forces which is total forces acting on the control volume so that we got here so importantly the sigma ij uh, it is i say this is the stress tensor tensor in cartesian coordinates yeah so we'll not discuss it a lot here because um it's not that important for us so what we got the total forces this is uh, equal you know to the the body force and the surface force and that's the thing but in some cases um, surface force could be like the viscous force and the some other forces yeah so we'll discuss it later but that's um, you know the, the the final term we got from the theories so this is um, actually the forces acting on the control volume and when we'll solve some problem then you will see the practical applications of this uh, theories.